serious Reddit. What was the scariest place you have ever been to? Reconstructed subway which exploded years ago in Debu, Korea. They memorialize the explosion on site. Scorched walls. Melted people's items. Burnt phone booths and all. But the scariest was the scorched walls with writings and handprints of the people that were trapped during the explosion. This subway is one of the busiest stations even today due to being the city's downtown area. Edit. No. It's not the sandwich shop. It's a train station underground. Lol. Edit 2. Sorry it was arson. Not explosion. I thought it was the explosion. But as the comments said, it was an arson case. But damn. That station has been destroyed several times. Still the busiest station today. That sounds horrifying dude. Probably a cave. Wriggling through a lemon drop as they called it. Where you go feet first down a skinnier tunnel. And have to wriggle down about 12 feet. Before you drop into a chamber below. About halfway my shoulders got stuck. And it took like 5 excruciating minutes to get loose. I don't know why I went spelunking. I'm claustrophobic. Ever since I read about the guy who got stuck and died because they couldn't get him unstuck I refuse. I will never wiggle through tiny caves like that. Edit. Nutty putty cave incident is what I meant. Oh god that's the first thing I thought of. I've seen the diagrams and just dug. And he's still there. Is he? I must have stopped reading about it after the diagrams and they are chilling. Yeah. They couldn't remove his body. Poor dude. An abandoned set of buildings that were part of a former college campus. Next to an abandoned military airfield. There was a lot to explore. But it definitely gave off an unsettling vibe. There was even an enterable hangar that had a bunch of torn gas masks lying on a pile in the middle of it. The masks were probably purposefully destroyed to prevent their use. Masks wear out. Especially when left unattended in an abandoned facility. I believe so. To. I don't see any other reason why they would leave them there. Certainly not for future usage. Plus, the hangar was littered with all kinds of other unusable things. I had just crossed over the border into China from Kazakhstan, for some reason. My buddy and I made it a plan to hit as many haunted houses as we could, for whatever reason. There were plenty on our route from Moscow to Delhi. We found out about one in Yurumki and decided to go as we went down these dank stairs into what seemed like once was part of an underground system. Everything just felt wrong. The person there had us sit in these gross chairs in front of this odd raised platform. Out of nowhere, this girl, and I mean no more than 14, comes out in a skimpy leopard print outfit with a snake. We are getting tfo vibes, but are the only ones there, and the dude or dudes running the place are right behind us. So, we proceed to watch this girl pop the snake's head into her mouth and swing it around like a helicopter. After the show they tried to guide us to these rooms with the grossest mattresses on the planet on the ground. It was really sad, creepy, and disgusting. All we could do is shove some RMB in the guy's hand and run out. I hope the girl is okay. Me too. This was in 2007, and I still wonder slash worry. Sadly. In reality, you can't just go all taken on the bad guys in the middle of nowhere when you're a backpacker. It's an easy way to get yourself killed. That girl is most likely dead or still a slave. Last year I lived in a suburb in Jifu Prefecture. Down the street was a broken down old house and my friend and I decided to do a photo shoot there one night because an old broken Japanese house looked pretty cool. When I say broken down. I mean entire walls were missing and exposing the inside. Floors were broken. And lots of old junk everywhere. Pipes and beams were exposed. And there were crates of old belongings. There was one crate though that had hundreds of photos of the same girl. As a child to adulthood. Black and white. Developed from film. It was always just her and no one else in the photo. I thought it was strange. That the old owners could just leave photos of this girl behind. The more I looked at them. I noticed she didn't seem happy in a lot of them. I got really uncomfortable, and so my friend and I left and abandoned the photo shoot. I think she might have been a victim of something and that's why the photos were left behind in a half-destroyed house. Got really freaked out that night. Edit to all the other expats in the Jiffle area. The house got torn down and became an empty lot a few months later. 
Where I live Danesia, Taiwan, people can be very superstitious about leaving things that might be contaminated with bad luck. So maybe they just abandoned the pictures without a crazy backstory. Or she died in the fire, which would be sad. Kinda cool but off-putting to be in a half-burned down house with everything left in it. We taught English in Japan, Fujinomiya, for a few years. The house we lived in was abandoned by the woman after her husband died. They left all their belongings, old wedding gifts, wedding kimono, zabutans, all that stuff. It got shoved into one room and the lady rented the house out to the private English school. It was freaky to live there and have to walk past the room filled to the ceiling with all their old belongings. A Greyhound station in Buffalo, New York in the middle of the night. I thought for sure I was going to get mugged. I'm from Buffalo and all of the Greyhound stations are like that so I understand. Hell. All the Greyhound's bus stops I've seen are like that. I live in a decent sized circle city with around 70k people and the only Greyhound stop was in the worst area possible. They finally added a stop in a gas station parking lot on the outside of town due to complaints. I rode the hound once across the country. Every station was straight out a nightmare. I got stuck in my car in a freezing step during a really bad snowstorm at minus 45 degrees celsius. The snow was real deep and my car was stuck so badly it would take a truck to pull it out. Cell phone didn't work. Maps didn't work. For those who don't know. Once the engine dies you have about 12 hours before you freeze to death. The worst thing is that the snow was so deep and the storm was so bad they probably wouldn't have found me until spring. I have been in a bunch of life threatening situations in my lifetime. But fuck. Nothing is as scary as freezing to death in the middle of nowhere. Thankfully, another guy saw me. He happened to be driving a real pumped up land cruiser. All geared up and shit. He gave me a real confused look once he realized I was driving a Jaguar Z. Probably the last fucking car you want to drive there. It would have been okay if I stayed on the road, I guess. But I couldn't see because of the storm and wandered about 50 meters off road. He pulled me out and led me for 2 hours at 40 kilometers an hour. Given he could easily do 120 thanks to his car. Shit, where was that? Kazakhstan. It's crazy out there. Jaguars in fucking Kazakhstan? Risperks. My brother went to visit my uncle in Papua New Guinea. He stayed the night in Port Moresby, one of the most dangerous cities in the world. His escort was a friend of my uncle's. An Australian federal police officer, that's FBI equivalent. And the hotel had armed guards at the gate, the front door, the desk and hallway to his room. From memory, the room was also protected. Solid doors and stuff with a panic room and an escape route, should the main room be breached. So uh, yeah, I'd say that would be a mite scary. I heard that the Australian embassy in Port Moresby is called by its diplomats for shit scared. Not surprised lol. The street at Bolton Abbey. It's not too far from where I used to live. So I decided to go there once. It's the most unassuming thing you can imagine. But knowing how dangerous it is just makes it seem ominous. Especially when you consider how many people it may have killed, and how few people ever wash up. I didn't go within 10 feet of the thing. For anyone who doesn't want to click the link, although it's Tom Scott. So you really should. The strid is what happens when a fast flowing river basically turns on its side. Putting a vast amount of water through a very slim, very deep, very dark groove in the ground. It looks calm on the surface, but if you fall in, you are royally fucked. There's a claim that it might be the most dangerous stretch of water in the world, and I can readily believe it. Close bracket. The strid is nightmarish. Everything about it is just blatantly wrong. It's literally a vertical river. Mortality rate. 100% it sort of looks harmless, but there's also something viscerally really scary about it. It is not nice. I'm an over the road truck driver. I've been to West High Cities all too often. And it still makes me freak just a bit lol. Although I know what to do if someone tries to rob me. Just get out the truck and hand over the keys. This s ain't worth my life. I thought you were gonna say step on the fucking gas. You saw what happened to Reginald Denny when he got out of his truck. I watched that live on TV as it happened as a child and it fucked me up. Between that and the Night Stalker coverage, growing up in LA 
was horrific when your parents are always watching the news, listening to talk radio, and reading and discussing what was in the LA Times. No shit. Saw it on live TV. Terrified me. During the night stalker my parents reinforced our locks, which scared me as much as news.